Hello mate and welcome to another exciting video. In this video we are going to look at how to render our iClone scenes using NVIDIA Omniverse. For those of you that can't afford or don't want to spend the money on the iRay plugin for iClone, the nearest thing that you're going to be able to do is use NVIDIA Omniverse which is free. So let's jump straight into this then. As you can see, I currently have a scene loaded in iClone, which may or may not be familiar. And I also have a uh, camera in the scene. So if I click on my scene here, you can see that I've got the room. I've got some lights in there, but I've also got my camera set up. So this is basically at this point ready to render. And what I want to do is throw this into NVIDIA Omniverse so that I can do precisely that. So what I have to do is with my scene loaded, I have to click on this uh, USD button in the top left hand corner, which says export USD Omniverse. And then we're going to save our file and then reload it in NVIDIA Omniverse. So I'm going to quickly pause, do that, and then I will see you in a second. So now that we have our uh, scene loaded into NVIDIA, uh, Omniverse, what we're going to do first is we're going to change our uh, view style, our preview style, to RTX Interactive and White Mode. And the reason we're doing that is just to speed everything up because this is a preview window and it will try to render in whatever settings we have told it to do up here, which we don't necessarily want to do unless we actually want to see a preview of the actual render output which is just going to slow everything down. The next thing we want to do is where it says preview camera at the top here, because we've already got a camera in our scene from iClone, we're actually going to click on this and we're going to change our scene to camera. Now this view probably looks a little bit more familiar to everybody. And as you can see, even though it's in white mode, it is already doing the ray tracing and calculating shadows and light bouncing. So as you can imagine, if we had the textures loaded into this as well, then it would be already slowing everything down, which is less than ideal. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to come up to the top here to window and where it says rendering, I'm actually gonna click on movie capture. And then this window here, I'm going to drag over to this side so that we've got those settings up there. And then I'm gonna click on the render settings tab here. Now the render that I'm going to set up I'm going to use Accurate IRA, but I could use Real Time or Interactive as well. Interactive path tracing isn't too bad, um, but let's see if we can get the best render that we possibly can first. I'm going to select Ac Accurate IRA, and then in the settings here, you can see that I've got options such as choosing what uh, device I'm going to use. I always have mine just set to the RTX 3080. I don't have G uh, CPU enabled. Scheduler settings. I'm going to change my scheduler mode to final frame, but that's the only setting that I'm going to adjust in here. I could change the quality or limit the quality of my render here as well if I wanted to, but um, for now, I'm just going to leave that as it is. And then in render settings, I've got denoiser active. I could turn that off if I wanted to. And then I'm making sure that I've got beauty canvas selected there as well. Now, all of these are perfectly fine in their default states, to be completely honest. I could just start rendering without changing any of these settings at all. However, we might as well do it. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually turn off matte object in my post processing because I don't really need, I don't want to do any post processing right now. I want to see what I can get just out of the render settings that I've got. So the next thing that I need to do is check that these settings in the movie capture are fine in movie type sequence there is no other option there so we have to leave it as is we have to make sure that we have the correct camera selected current is the one that we're seeing in our preview window so that's fine frame rate doesn't matter because we're capturing a still image in this shot and custom range doesn't matter either because as i said we're not going to use that next thing that's important to us is our resolution and you can choose your resolution um, you can just set it to HD or you can set it up custom. I'm just going to leave mine as 1920 by 1080 for now. And we will see how the output looks. And if it looks like it needs to be oversampled, then obviously I will make it bigger. Now we're coming down into the rendering style. Yes, I want shaded mode. I don't want white mode. And I need to change this render preset from RTX real time to accurate IRA. And then I'm going to turn off motion blur because we don't have any motion. Now, this is really the only setting that we're really interested in. It is the path trace samples per pixel. One, 
is nowhere near enough. You're going to want to probably be closer up into the thousands for this one. This is, if you're a Dash Studio user, um, what you would call the iterations. So this is the bit that's going to control the quality of our output render. If I were just to hit render now, the image would be a grainy mess and barely usable. In fact, to be quite honest, because of this, this scene's complexity, I would say we're probably going to be needing to be in the two to three thousand iterations range, um, which is going to take some time to achieve. So if I were to double click here, I'm just going to set this to 2500 and we'll see how that looks. Q settings you don't have to worry about and then output is going to be your uh, output path to wherever you want to save your images. So I'm going to do that. Now, word of caution, when you hit the render button, when you've got the iteration set up high like this, it is going to appear that the program has crashed, but it's not. It's just doing its thinking. It's going to sort of be on. It's going to come on and off in terms of its response to your input so don't stress don't fret just hit the current cap capture frame and then go and do something else and come back to it when it's finished because this much like uh, irate in dash studio does use a lot of gpu power in fact all of your gpu's power so there's no point trying to accomplish anything else while this is running so i'm going to hit the render button and then we'll see what the output is like at 2500 iterations